there are tiny living things that we are unable to see with our naked eyes. They can be found all over the place. They are around you, on your body, and even inside you. Can you name what are they? Hello boys and girls, how have you been today? I hope you've been good and been doing your homework. I'm teacher Elaine and thank you for watching ITTV. Today we are going to learn something very interesting. It is my favorite topic, the microorganisms. Welcome back boys and girls. Now, today we are going to start off a little different. I'm going to introduce to you a little bit about the history of Earth and what the early life forms on Earth is. Earth itself is about 4.6 billion years old. There was no oxygen in the atmosphere during the early period since Earth existed. The early Earth was hotter than it is today. For its 200 million years or so, the surface of Earth may have exceeded 100 degrees Celsius. Wow, that must be really hot. In addition, the planet was frequently bombarded with meteorites. Under this condition, free water could not exist. Water was only accumulated as Earth cooled. How fast Earth cooled is unknown, but it has been hypothesized that there were a form of life which existed when Earth was still fairly hot. Wow, in this hot, like very hot environment, can you guess what life form existed then? Well, these early life forms were able to tolerate heat. They are the heat tolerant bacteria. Now, like we have mentioned, the earth started off with no oxygen and no accumulated water. So, how does this oxygen come? The cyanobacteria. Look at how cyanobacteria looks like. Well, they contribute a lot to our environment. Cyanobacteria first appeared on Earth about 2.8 billion years ago, accumulating oxygen in the atmosphere during its photosynthesis. Well, during the photosynthesis, which emits oxygen, the accumulated oxygen then leads to the formation of ozone, protecting the environments from direct radiation from the sun that could have killed some other life forms. Evolution slowly occurs over billions of years until we have what we see today. Animals, plants and other living things. Microorganisms Microorganisms were the first life form on Earth. Boys and girls, I'm sure you have heard of microorganisms. They are frequently referred to as germs. Can you see germs with your naked eyes? Or can you see it with a magnifying glass? No, even with the help of magnifying glass, you cannot see microorganisms. We can only see microorganisms through a microscope. Because microorganisms are very, very tiny in size. These tiny microorganisms are too small to be seen, but their existence was suspected. These suspicions led to the discovery of microscope. Robert Hooke was the first to describe microorganisms and he invented his own microscope. This is a drawing of the microscope used by Robert Hooke in the year of 1664. However, the first person who ever saw bacteria was Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. This is a picture of Anthony van Leeuwenhoek's microscope invention. 
Well, the it, microscope now obviously do not look like that anymore. It looks more sophisticated. It looks like this. This is an example of one of the various types of microscope. Now, I'm going to introduce to you the various types of microorganisms which exist on Earth. First, when we study microorganisms, we study microbiology. The study of microorganisms is called microbiology. Well, microorganisms are categorized into different categories. There are bacteria, there are viruses, there are protozoa, and there are also fungi, yeast, or mold. Bacteria. These are viruses. These are examples of fungi, or frequently referred to as mold. And these are protozoas. Like human beings, microorganisms are made up of cells. Well, bacteria is a type of microorganisms. So, bacteria, they are unicellular. When we say uni, it means one. So, unicellular means one cell. So, bacteria is made up of one cell. The other types of microorganisms are the fungi, or better known as mold. Let's see, is fungi made up of one cell, or are they made up of many cells? Well, I have a diagram here for you. The fungi, they look like these. Can you see that they are made up of more than one cell? Look, they are divided into many different cells, so fungi are multicellular. They are made up of more than one cell. Well, yeast is also a type of fungi, right? But yeast, they are unicellular because they are just made up of one cell. These are different individuals of yeast cells, okay? Remember that. What about virus? Well, boys and girls, virus, although they are categorized under microorganisms, but virus, they are non-living things. Viruses are non-living. Virus is also not made up of cell. They are termed as acellular particles. They are not cell and they are non-living. They are non-living because they cannot produce on their own. All right? We'll see how later. But first, We'll look at where microorganisms are found. Well, microorganisms are practically everywhere. They are on everything that you touch, the air that you breathe, and they are also even on your skin. The study of bacteria is known as bacteriology. Well, bacteria, they exist in many different shapes and sizes. Take a look at these. Like from just a drop of water, you can find various different shapes of bacteria. Bacteria can exist in rod shape or bacillus, or they can also exist in caucus shape. Can you see the round shape? Yes, they can exist singly, just a round shape or they can also be arranged in a chain. These are streptococci, all right? And they can also be arranged in a bunch. Well, they look like a bunch of grapes here, right? Yes, and they are also bacteria which exist in the shape of a comma shape, all right? And they also exist in spiral shape. We call this the Spirulum bacteria. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of how bacteria look like in the slides. Some bacteria may even glow in the dark. This is a picture showing you of an example of bacteria found in the soil. Bacteria can also be found in water. 
Well, you know that bacteria can be found in water. Now you understand why you have to boil water before you drink them? Yes, to kill all the bacteria present in the water. Bacteria can also be found in the air that you breathe. Well, the air it is contaminated with so much different kinds of bacteria and some bacteria they are harmful to humans health. Well, diseases like pneumonia and flu, these diseases are caused by microorganisms present in the air. Bacteria can also be found in contaminated food. Well, these bacteria may cause you to have food poisoning, which may lead you to have symptoms of food poisoning such as diarrhea. Bacteria can be obviously found in feces. This is why you will have to wash your hands every time after you come out from the toilet. Well, like I told you just now, bacteria can also be found on our skin and also inside our body, right? So this is a diagram, a picture showing you how the intestinal bacteria look like. These intestinal bacteria, they may be beneficial to our intestine, aiding us in our digestion. Some bacteria can live in extreme environments. These bacteria are termed as extremophiles. Extreme environments. What do they mean by extreme environments? Do you know that? Like we've learned just now, during the history of Earth, bacteria was able to live in the Earth during a very, very hot condition. Remember, they are heat-tolerant bacteria. Well, bacteria can also survive in very acidic conditions and also very cold environments and also under very high pressures. The hot springs. In places so hot like in the hot springs, you can also find bacteria. This is a picture of a boiling hot spring in Yellowstone National Park. The orange-red coloration is caused by dense colonies of photosynthetic cyanobacteria. Now you understand why the hot spring is colored orange in color? It is because of the presence of cyanobacteria. Bacteria can also be found in very cold environments. Well, can you name me an example of a very cold environment? Yes, the Antarctica. The extremophiles or bacteria living in extreme environment can be found in very cold environments such as the Antarctica. Now, so much about the bacteria. Now we'll finally move on to protozoa. Protozoa. They are usually found in ponds, lakes, and rivers, especially in dirty waters. Here are some pictures of protozoa. Well, some protozoa, they feed on or they eat bacteria. They play an important role in the environment. Well, if there's nothing to feed on or eat bacteria, then the bacteria will multiply or grow into a very huge amounts. So the existence of protozoa, they control the number or the population of bacteria in the environment. Now let's see fungi. The study of fungi is known as mycology. These are examples of basic structures of fungus. When there is one, we term it as fungus. If there is more than one, they are named as fungi. So fungus is singular and fungi is plural. So this is an example of the basic structure of one type of fungus. And this is rhizosperse species. It is frequently found in bread mold. The blue one 
shows you how this fungus looks like under the microscope, whereas the other one is only a drawing of a fungus. Well, children, do you know that mushroom is also a type of fungus? Well, some mushrooms, they are poisonous, but they are also mushrooms that we can eat. So these mushrooms are macroscopic fungi. They are larger in size. Most of the time, we cannot see microscopic or tiny fungi, but we can observe the colours of their spores. For example, in a rotten bread, you can observe different colours of moulds on your rotten bread. They are the spores of fungi. This is the example of how fungi looks like. You can see the colours because these colours are the colours of the spores. Now, where can fungi be found on? Fungi can be found on trees. They can also be found on forest floors. And not forgetting the moldy bread. And also, they cause the spoilage of fruits. This is an example of the moldy orange. Fungi, they can also exist they favorably exist in warm and damp surroundings. I'm sure you've seen this. Mold on ceilings. Can you see that sometimes in your ceilings there are black spots or green spots? Well, these are molds or fungi growing on your ceiling. And also, mold on walls especially in the toilet. You may be able to see black dots. They are fungi. Now, we'll move on to virus. Remember, virus, although virus is a microorganism, but they are non-living. The study of virus is known as virology. Viruses are the smallest in size among all microorganisms. Viruses are usually portrayed as harmful particles. Well, little do you know that actually some viruses, they do not harm humans at all. Well, think of an example. Let's say um, the vegetables. Sometimes we can see like yellow colorings or a text of virus on some specific vegetables, okay? Have you ever thought of if you consume these vegetables, do you get viral attack as well? No. So this proves that, well, if the virus attacks only on plants, they may not harm humans. Well, these are termed as the plant-specific viruses. They attack only plants. Well, if these viruses attack humans, then you will have to be extra careful. Viruses can also be found in many places, such as the ocean and also in the air. I'm sure you have heard of the H1N1 flu that is happening now, right? Well, they are caused by virus. Examples of airborne viruses, meaning viruses that is transferred through air, are such as the SARS virus, H1N1 virus, H5N1 virus, the chickenpox virus, and many more. This is a picture showing you how an infected plant look like. The tobacco plant is infected by the virus called the tobacco mosaic virus. That is how the tobacco mosaic virus look like under microscope. Viruses, they can also be found on contaminated food or water. This is a picture of a Norwalk virus. Norwalk virus is another virus that can cause food poisoning and it is frequently associated with food poisoning on the cruise or ships. Well, if you have eaten food which is contaminated with dirty water, you can get food poisoning and these Norwalk viruses usually contaminate shellfish or seafood like oysters, okay? Now, Viruses can infect many types of cells, including plant cells, 
bacteria, protozoa, animal cells and also human cells. Viruses invade and reproduce in their host cells. Now, I'm going to briefly explain to you how this virus attack bacterial cells. Look at this diagram, children. These are viruses. And this is an example of a bacterial cell. Well, viruses which attacks bacteria are termed as bacterial phages. So these bacteria which attacks the bacterial cells, they land on the bacterial cell and inject, okay? They give out their genetic material or better known as their DNA. You have heard of DNA, right? Okay? So when their DNA enters the bacterial cell, they will use the help of the bacteria to help them produce their heads, their necks, and also the tails of viruses, okay? So they replicate and they form into many, many viruses inside the bacterial cell. When these viruses have multiplied in number, they will be released from the bacterial cells. Well, then, in order for them to come out from the bacterial cell, they will have to break or lyse the bacterial cell open, killing the bacterial cell. So now, you understand how dangerous these viruses are. Now, we have learned about so much on microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and also viruses. I hope you have understood what we have learned today. Now, we'll move on to the exercise section. Question number one. Most microorganisms are too tiny to be seen with the naked eye. How can they be seen? A. With spectacles B. Through a telescope C. Through a periscope Or is it D. Through a microscope? The answer is D. Through a microscope Which of the following is the smallest group of microorganisms? Is it A. Yeast Yeast is also a type of fungi Or B. Virus C. Bread mold Bread mold is also fungi D. Mushroom Mushroom is also a type of fungi. So the answer is B. Viruses, they are the smallest group of microorganisms. Now question number three. Diagram shows four types of living things. We have P, it is an ant, Q, an earthworm, R and S. What is R? R is examples of yeast cells. Okay, yeast, they are Fungi and S. S is an example of how a fungus look like under a microscope. So which of the living things above are microorganisms? So which one, boys and girls? It is R and S. They are both fungi. P and Q are not microorganisms. So the answer is C. R and S only. Simple, isn't it? Now we'll move on to vocabulary of the day. Chicken pox, cha cha. Contaminated, terchema. In fact, menjangkit. Microorganism, microorganisma. Are you anticipating for the trivia for today? Now let's see the trivia session. Do you know that the probiotic drinks you consume contain millions of the bacteria Lactobacillus casei, life culture? This is an example of the probiotic drinks that you frequently purchase. These bacteria are actually good for your intestines and aids in digestion. Can you see? 
They will proliferate or live in your large intestines and aid in digestion. Now you have learned so much about microorganisms today. Interesting, aren't they? Okay, I hope you know how to name examples of microorganisms. Microorganisms are such as bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and viruses. Remember, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, they are living things, okay? But virus, this virus is a microorganism, but it is not living, all right? Okay. Thank you for your time, boys and girls. I hope to see you again soon in our next lesson. Bye-bye.